kind of made me feel like an imposter. Sakit nang kagat. It's just tough, man. <laughs> Every animal lover has thought of becoming a vet at least once, and it's easy to get why. Vets get to work with cute animals on a daily basis and get paid fairly well for doing so. But anyone who's done enough research knows that it's not that simple. You must have an insane knowledge bank for all types of animals, a deep understanding of potential diseases and treatments, and an endless source of compassion for both the animals and owners. As I enter my first year of veterinary proper, with my first two years of vet school being strictly online, I wanted to see if I could put into practice the subjects I've learned and understand if I could actually handle the daily life of a small animal doctor. So, I spent my summer as an apprentice at the New Alabang Veterinary Center with only online learning experience. <laughs> Alright, so it's officially my first day as an intern in the new Alabang Veterinary Clinic. I'm honestly a bit nervous because not having any sorts of face-to-face -face classes over the past two years of vet school got me doubting my, my skills and knowledge that I've built over the years. But at the same time, I'm also very excited. Let's get it! During my drive to the clinic, I was met with an immense level of anxiety as I desperately tried to recall all the subjects I've taken. I knew that they had high expectations from me as a vet student, and I wanted to make sure that I could live up to their standards. But once I arrived at the clinic, my feelings of doubt were instantly suppressed. The new Alabang Veterinary Center, or NAVC for short, is one of the recent additions of vet clinics in the Alabang area. Not only do they have state-of-the-art facilities, but the entire clinic is aesthetically welcoming as it resembles a warm coffee shop more than an actual hospital. On top of this, the entire staff was so friendly and made me feel right at home. I even got to meet some of the resident animals, such as Ringo, their certified cutie pie leopard gecko with a beautiful bioactive enclosure, and of course, Daikon. This is Daikon, the resident Burmese python, super friendly and super gorgeous albino Burmese python. <laughs> After touring the place for a bit and meeting everyone, it was time to get to work. I was pretty much thrown into the fire on my first day as I assisted in multiple surgeries, helped prepare all kinds of medicines, and of course, consulted with acute patients. Honestly, I didn't realize how much moving was actually involved for a day at the clinic. And by the end of the day, my legs were totally giving in. But my heart certainly wasn't. So, I just got back from my first day at the new Alabang Veterinary Center. And man, was that so much fun. I really enjoyed first day palang and I already got to see like a bunch of different cases. Got to see an emergency C-section, got to help out in the dental prophylaxis and also got to meet a bunch of different clients but honestly at the same time it was really nerve-wracking didn't know a lot of the medication um, the treatment and how to use the equipment and I also made like a bunch of different mistakes um, when it came to restraining the animals or even practicing sterility like kind of made me feel like an imposter at times like am I really a vet student um, but at the same time I also know that it's all part of the learning process. Not gonna lie, I'm tired as hell, uh, but also still excited to get back on the grind and learn more about, you know, the daily life of a small animal veterinarian. Veterinarians have always been like rock stars for me. They save animals from complex diseases, interpret difficult scientific results, and effectively communicate with their clients. Masters of all trades. However, I often find myself wondering if I'd ever be capable of all of those things. So, the best way to grasp whether or not I could handle it is by asking the vets themselves. Hi, so I'm Doc Nia. I'm Carlo Peralta. I'm Dr. Carmela. I'm Yanasea. Doc Jeline. I'm Doc Leo Almedor, and I specialize in exotic medicine. <laughs> it's the kind of work that you don't have to force yourself to wake up and then mm -hmm. go to. It's a fun job. Nakukure ko sila, especially yung mga cases na mukang hindi na maliliktas, but then through patience, they get to recover. 
we get to save lives, we touch lives, and we get to interact with the owners, you know? We build relationships, we build bonds. Sometimes those bonds can even become sort of something like family. I guess that's the beauty about uh, the practice here in the clinic. I really like working with people towards a common goal. So being able to adjust to their needs, their wants, their financial capabilities, and their specific goals for their pet. Apart from my scrub store. When clients also appreciate what we're doing, kasi sobrang rare minsan na na-appreciate ng clients yung ginagawa natin. Kasi parang minsan iniisip nila, ay, ano lang yan, trabaho talaga nila yan, ganyan, uh -huh. dapat lang ginagawa nila. Pero yun, sobrang nakakataba ng puso. It's nice to interact with animals, obviously. And it's also nicer to be able to bond with clients. Because definitely going here with pets, you have the same interest. Yeah, it's nice to get into the soft side of people. Animals are the soft spot of people. And when you're able to heal that pet, and you're also in a way healing that person. So I think, I think that's one of the best parts of the job then. I can imagine my like, daily life not, not being around animals. It's just the best thing ever. One of the main reasons I interned at NAVSI is because not only do they treat your typical pets, such as cats and dogs, but even exotic animals. A true fascination of mine. And since Doc Leo is one of the few exotic animal specialists in the country, I was lucky enough to work with a bunch of them. Alright, so today we have our first exotic animal in and we need to get a phycalysis of these two bearded dragons because there are other animals in the household that have been tested positive for spirochettes. So yeah, we're gonna get some samples. It's a bit dry already, but we'll make do with what we can. So we've got your glass slide. Just going to smear it over there. Beautiful bearded dragons. Got two of these donors. Come on guys. Look at how beautiful he is. Beautiful white zero coloration. And this is the bigger one. He's about 13.9 grams. So off you go, little bro. And now it's time for the little one. Even smaller. I mean, look at this guy. He's adorable. And now they're just gonna bask under some good heat and UV. Enjoy the rest of their stay here in New Alabang Veterinary Center. You see, not all clinics treat exotic animals since most vets don't have enough experience working with them. But recently, more and more people have started getting into exotic pets. The term exotic is often associated with scaly critters. But in reality, exotic pets include a wide variety of animals, including birds, reptiles, and all types of cute mammals that aren't your typical pets. This is Babs. That is such a cutie. A little bit noisy, for sure. Ooh. Nom noms. So over here, we got an avian patient. This is a Major Mitchell's parrot with a super beautiful orange and red plumage. And she's actually quite a sweetheart. Right, baby? Such a cool animal. Put it through a white background so that you guys can just Appreciate how gorgeous she is. Super sick bird, right? He's a good looking bird. You're a good looking bird. Since there aren't a lot of accessible wildlife practitioners in the Philippines, exotic vets are often required to deal with the rescued wildlife. And because of this, I got to carry out one of my long awaited dreams of wrangling a wild snake. Alright, yeah. Alright, good work. Alright. Then we will employ like a spaghetti. Right. Look at that. Woo! Okay, come on. Come on, let's push Head first. Yum! Success! <laughs> I was loving every second of working with all these types of animals from the smallest of hamsters to the largest Alaskan Malamutes. And for a while, all my fears of becoming a vet disappeared for a bit. But as life usually plays out, I was smacked right in the face by a reality check. So it's another bearded dragon day, but unfortunately all for the wrong reasons. So this right here is Cora, 
and Cora has severe impaction which basically means that none of the food is passing through the digestive tract. In fact, uh, Cora over here even had some food stuck on the mouth and you can see it from the oral cavity which is not a good sign so uh, she's gonna be staying here uh, for the next couple of days so that we can solve the impaction problem and she also has a lot of worms as we got in the fecalysis um, so we're gonna be giving her dewormers and just be monitoring her for the next couple of days and unfortunately we also have another case of a bearded dragon this girl right here Puff I'll show you guys a photo like right here maybe of what Puff looked like a couple of days ago and uh, two weeks ago she was doing really well and all of a sudden the owner started uh, telling Doc Leo that the beard of the bearded dragon was always black which often means that they are stressed and um, today she was immediately brought in because she was no longer breathing so right now we got her on a nebulizer just to help out a little bit more with the breathing injected some atropine which is a cholinergic medicine that just helps with the parasympathetic system so it will help her in her breathing but um, it's not looking too good for Puff and fingers crossed that she pulls it through. Both Cora and Puff were confined in the hospital for several days. Throughout their stay, I had formed a real bond with them as I was the one responsible for checking up on them which is why it hit me that much harder once this happened. So I just got back from the clinic and boy was today tough. Two days ago we lost Puff. Like I mentioned she just stopped breathing and um, unfortunately we couldn't save her so that took a huge toll and today um, we lost Cora as well so that's two bearded dragons in one week. Cora's condition was just not getting better. Still wasn't eating on her own, still wasn't pooping um, and unfortunately we came to the decision with her owner that the best thing to do moving forward is to just let her rest and euthanize her. It's just tough man because no matter how many meds you give, how many tests you run or how hard you try, you really just can't save everyone. And it's not like it's the first time that an animal has died on me but yeah, it's just tough man and it never gets easier. The most challenging thing for me is the emotional roller coaster in some days. For me, walking from a euthanasia to a puppy consult <laughs> is actually one of the toughest things, especially as an emotional person. Yeah. It's not always puppy, cute kittens, no? so sometimes it can get serious. In my case, 95% of the time it's uh, cases that are treatable, but the 5% na cases na difficult and you have to make big decisions. You know, hard part of being a pet and uh, not all people can relate to. Hindi po kami Diyos. <laughs> not all patients can be saved talaga. We don't have enough rest. Not only just physical rest, like rest mentally, spiritually, emotionally. So right now, the pet industry has been booming. You know, the problem is now is the supply for vets. We want to provide the best service for our clients and our patients, but the problem is we also get burnt out. We also don't know now when we get home, it doesn't end there. So sometimes <laughs> you dream about cases and it turns out to be a nightmare. Na. And not all people think na very serious and when you get home, madadala mo rin yung stress of work. The harsh reality is that vets have to deal with death on a daily basis. Whether it's due to freak accidents or chronic diseases, death will forever be omnipresent. Learning about the emotional roller coaster that vets have to endure every day had me questioning my own capabilities. Am I sturdy enough to go through the ins and outs of being a vet? Do I actually have what it takes to become a vet? Now while the vets at NAVSI didn't have an answer on how to make the pain go away, they did help me realize that at the end of the day, it's all worth it. You form this like special bond with your patients when they're here. There will always come a time when we encounter the patient that's really special to us. Going home after like a tiring day, you would still think about your patients. It's not always rainbows and butterflies, but yes, uh, we have puppy consults that make our days, but some days are tougher than others. But it's worth it, I would say. Throughout my time in NAVSI, I learned more things than I ever could have predicted. From the hard skills such as calculating dosages and surgical procedures to the softer skills like communicating with clients effectively. I'm definitely gonna miss working with all these animals, but I think what I'll miss the most are all those tiny moments in between. 
those lunch breaks with the staff, goofing around during downtime, and sharing lots of laughs. And while I may have felt incapable of overcoming the many challenges of becoming a vet, the vets at Navsi reminded me that this is all part of the process. Don't be scared to fail. Part talaga yun ng ane, kahit doctor na, fresh grad, or a as a student, dun tayo parang makaka-earn ng mga lessons na dadaling natin throughout our life. Kahit yung pinakamagaling ng doctor, super prone pa rin magkamali. Don't give up. Uh, there will come a time na you might think na ayaw mo na, pagod ka na. Especially thinking na kasi six years, tapos makikita mo yung mga uh, batchmates mo, they're making a life na, they have already graduated. That's okay, you'll get there. Um, just continue and follow your heart. If you think this is the profession for you and you can't live or you can't imagine life not being around animals or being there for animals, just go for it. Just look for a good mentor, study really hard follow your dreams. When you start working and then things get hard, always think of the reason why you became a vet in the first place or why you took up vet. Uh, nobody becomes a vet to be a billionaire or a millionaire. No? We all became vets because we genuinely love animals. So when you get into practice and you're seeing a vet, always make sure that the priority is the patient, not your pocket. So always put yourself in the position of the client. Only recommend tests that are needed only recommend procedures that are needed and then when everything's difficult I go back to the reason why I became with it. Always remember that I did it for the animals, not for anything else. So what can I say after working as a vet intern? At the start, I was afraid that I'd be exposed as a fraud since all of my subjects were taken online. Scared that I didn't actually have what it takes. But the truth is, no amount of preparation will ever remove that feeling of being an imposter. The only thing that will give you the confidence is experience itself. So if I had one key takeaway from my time at NAVSI, it's knowing that this profession is where I belong. I learned that being a vet is so difficult, but it's also one of the most rewarding jobs out there. Nothing quite compares to that feeling of knowing that you helped free an animal from pain and suffering together with your client. And the only way I was able to attain this was by putting myself out there and taking that leap. If it scares you, it just means that it's important to you and that you need to take that risk. So my question for you is, will you do the same? I'll see y'all in the next one.